Hey guys, today we are looking at the US Infantry Combat Team in 172 by Hasegawa. It's an interesting little set um, because it is a hard plastic set um, which comes with about 20 figures, so it's not the usual kind of complement of 50 that you'd find in uh, a normal, shall we say, uh, box of uh, 172 uh, soldiers. Um, now, in fairness, these uh, particular guys are kind of basically copies of the uh, Airfix in a lot of ways. And I'm doing a little series on the Airfix uh, US Marines in 172 and the derivatives thereof, so this uh, forms part of that little series. So, uh, a little look at the box there. Basically, it's just a nice little artwork there. Uh, you can see what's on it. It's, uh, it's got the, uh, the guy running with the rifle, this character here, uh, 30 caliber machine gun at the back. Uh, bazooka and uh, some strange individual giving a, a thumbs up um, or whatever he's doing there he seems to be pretending to fire a rifle or something I don't know um, side of the box and just a little bit of information on that same on the other side that's it really uh, also you get the uh, sprue uh, instructions which I will just gingerly open here as you can see um, because this is a kind of a multi-part thing um, now, there's only a few little bits and pieces to be put in, really, but uh, they do give instructions, in fairness. Um, fairly straightforward, as you can see, you have a machine gun team, bazooka team, you have this unusual chap here sitting on a little bit of a pile of rubble or something, and uh, then you have these two characters here, and this guy here, uh, depicted on the front cover, um, was the chap with no gun, but you have the opportunity to put a rifle or uh, some machine gun in his hand, if you so wish. And then you have these guys, which would look very familiar as well. They're very similar to the uh, the Airfix figures. So, and then you get uh, some color uh, paint instructions at the base there, um, and some more on the back, which is uh, which is fine. Um, I'll be using the Humbro uh, colors recommended by the Airfix uh, 132 set because that will tie in with uh, the other various uh, ones I've done, uh, the Airfix themselves and the uh, Esky. Uh, set as well which are quite similar so that's what I'm doing as I say with these guys it's going to be for a rapid fire battalion so they'll all be matching it together so let's have a look at the sprue now let's put this out of the way for you so the first sprue there as you can see we just get that into shot um, at the top there you have a few little bits of arms and bits and pieces here along here so that's uh, all fine for the multi-pose element this is uh, the aforementioned guy here with uh, his thumb up and uh, there's a bazooka guy these are the various limbs for that um, this lad here is supposed to be uh, loading the bazooka interesting if you look at the bazooka it seems to be a bit of a strange affair um, not really re representative of a particular bazooka I think it's kind of a generic sort of a resemblance um, kind of the way that guy's holding it, it just looks a bit uh, a bit awkward um, but anyway we'll see how we get on uh, this is the guy sitting on the uh, the mount of rubble whatever it is that's on the other sprue um, a little bit of a barrel bend there uh, this is the rifleman of course again very similar to the airfix guy uh, turn these right around and you have a running rifleman again very reminiscent of airfix this little crouch figure um, which is unique to this set um, and would have been nice in the airfix set actually it's a good little pose and then up on the top here you will see the gun crew they might seem a little bit familiar as well because they're based on the airfix guys too so that's that detail isn't too bad um, in fairness they don't have an awful lot of equipment on them um, which is a bit unfortunate but again it ties in with the airfix as well so that'll do fine do have some of these kind of rather annoying injection molding plugs here in awkward positions uh, this is right on top of the canteen this is just uh, above it and so on a few there and there but we'll just trim those off I'm sure that'll be fine separate head there for this guy also so we'll see how they, how they go. The barrels, as you can see, they're a little bit, uh, little bit brittle. That's not going to last, I don't think, but we'll see how we, how we manage. Um, and that's that sprue. The other sprue, then, is this one. If I can just orientate it a bit better. So you can see there you have uh, some weapons. You've got an M1 Garand. You've got an M1919 uh, 30 caliber Browning machine gun. Tripod, ammo box, a few bits and pieces. Uh, rounds for the bazooka. Ammo boxes, uh, Thompson submachine gun there, which is nicely depicted, and a couple of bases here as well. And this double base here is for the bazooka team. Although I think, to be perfectly honest, I, what I would be doing is uh, do a little bit of conversion 
um, because as I say it's for a rapid fire battalion so I kind of need a mortar team and I think that's what those guys will be doing but we'll see how, we work, how that works out this is the uh, mound of rubble um, yeah because every set needs a mound of rubble but there you go uh, we'll see how we get on with that and strangely enough you have uh, two logs right uh, okay fine a uh, bit of a waste of plastic really that could have been utilized for a couple of extra figures but there you go um, and of course you get two of each of these sprues so I will have four logs <laughs> um, and two mounds but there you go and obviously a second uh, set of those guys as well so that's basically uh, what you get in the box as I say these are matching in with um, the Airfix uh, 172 US Marines which I've already done a video on you might uh, check that out like and subscribe and all that business that'd be great uh, and I'm also tying that in with the uh, Esky, which as you can see on the uh, artwork there in the front cover are quite similar also as well so that's kind of what's going on there and um, I've done videos on these as well so you can check that out and see where you go so this is basically uh, the project for this evening to get these guys painted up and, and added to the uh, to the battalion and uh, we'll see how we get on so uh, bear with me for another few minutes lads and I will have the uh, figures painted up and we'll see how they worked out for us. So, talk to you in a second, guys. Well, guys, here are the painted examples of the US Infantry Combat Team in 172 by Hasegawa. Uh, they're done up in the colors recommended by Airfix on the back of their 132 uh, scale um, set for their uh, US Marines and US Infantry. Um, reason being, this, of course, is a series uh, to do with the uh, World War II US Marines in Air by Airfix in 172 and the derivatives thereof. Uh, so there are the colours, that's the colour scheme I'm using because uh, I like the old nostalgia and uh, the idea of having them turned out in the uh, the way they would have been back in the day uh, if I was capable enough to paint a figure, although you could argue that I'm still not, but however. Um, so, how do we get on? Well, looking at them there as you can see, uh, we have, um, we'll start with this running infantryman here first. Uh, we have this chap here, uh, turned out all right, a uh, green jacket, I think that was uh, like 103, 116 for the helmet and uh, 29 for the pants and 83 for the webbing, they're humbrol uh, matte enamel colours. Uh, in comparison to the Airfix, there is an Airfix figure there beside him and here is the Esky guy, you may remember uh, we did the videos on the Airfix and the Esky already. So you can see there is a slight size difference, uh, the Airfix being a little smaller and the Esky being a little larger on those um, but other than that no major uh, no major issue um, so that's the guy running um, now we also have the guy with the M1 carbine uh, I'll just get that chap out of the way there for a moment um, only major difference between this guy and the original airfix chap is that again a little bit of height variation uh, but down here you might see he has an extended magazine pouch uh, which is odd uh, although having said that, in fairness, the M1 carbine did in later stages of the war, and particularly in the Korean conflict, with a, a fully automatic capable version, uh, have a longer magazine, although I believe that was a curved magazine, but I'd be prepared to be corrected on that. Uh, and on the back there, um, he has, the guy on the left, the Hasegawa chap, has the what looks like a holster for a 45 here in position uh, which doesn't appear on uh, this particular guy um, so just a little uh, curiosity there um, what the reasoning behind that was I don't know but there you go uh, then you have this little chap uh, who is sort of uh, I suppose just in a ready position um, looks quite nice I have to say um, would have been a nice pose to have had in uh, the Airfix set itself anyway. Um, sculpt is very very similar to the Air, that of the Airfix, the original Airfix set. Uh, so it makes me wonder was this an original um, proposed for the Airfix set or not, I don't know. Um, could have been, maybe not. But a uh, nice pose to have nonetheless. Pity there's only two of them in that set actually, would have been nice to have a few more. Um, here we have a bazooka. Uh, now this bazooka it looks more like a generic um, 
rendition of a bazooka than uh, anything particularly specific. I've had a look online and I'd be fairly familiar with the armaments of World War II and I cannot find either online or any of my fairly extensive reference uh, collection um, a reference to a bazooka that looks like that. Uh, but that I mean that the left hand is holding the tube as opposed to a foregrip um, of some sort. But there you go, so it may, may or may not be a representation of an actual bazooka. There is the Airfix one, and you might remember the Esky one was a, a variant uh, based on the figure standing. Um, but nice and uh, nice to have it in fairness at the same time. I mean, it's a nice little pose in that too. It's just a pity that there wasn't a foregrip on that bazooka. Um, it may well be a smaller caliber version of this one. I'm not sure, but I still uh, believe that there should have been a foregrip there. But anyway, uh, so that's the bazooka. Uh, what else have we got? Oh yeah, a little bit of conversion uh, just before we move on. This guy is basically uh, the uh, guy here, the M1 carbon guy, chopped and changed a little bit. If I can just get that more in focus or in the uh, centre of the camera there for you. So uh, I think you can see what's going on there. Um, all the bottom section the, from the waist down is the same but the top section on the guys on the left and right of the, of, uh, the chap in the middle there are slightly different and that was the uh, chap that was sitting on the mound of earth or rubble um, we'll see if we can just remind you there with that uh, yeah there you go this guy I set that up and to be honest I didn't like it it looked terrible it looked stupid um, Nice for a diorama perhaps, but not for wargaming, so I basically uh, chopped that figure in half and put uh, the top half on the bottom section of one, of one or two of these guys. There was four of these in the box, if I remember correctly, and two of these, so that's how I generated those guys. I decided to have them kind of firing down rather than firing up or anything like that, just to have a little bit of variance in the, uh, the poses within the actual set itself, and that was really my, uh, my thinking in relation to that. Um, now, what else did we have? Uh, there was a 30 cal, which I actually changed out to be a 50 cal. As you can see there, uh, the 50 cal is from an Armorfast uh, M10. Let's see if I can hold that and get the light on it for you. So basically, that is that. Um, that's that there. Uh, it's kind of a low silhouetted piece, so it's kind of hard to see, but. Um, it's just the two figures and uh, I dropped in a 50 cal instead of a 30 cal. I did use a 30 cal stand alright um, and I used the ammunition belt from the Esky set rather than from the uh, Hasegawa because it was a slightly larger uh, slightly larger ammunition belt so I thought it would probably suit better with the 50 caliber machine gun rather than the 30. Um, here we have a mortar, as I said in the earlier part of the video, I am using these for rapid fire purposes, so I needed mortars, I needed a 60mm mortar and a 50mm mortar for uh, rapid fire purposes, so that's what we have here, or at least that's what uh, I'm attempting to show here, um, so if you can get in tight with that we can see that this is an old matchbox mortar, this figure is a Hasegawa figure, a crawling figure, and this is the original Airfix figure. And uh, at the back there we just have, what is that, uh, just here we have a Thompson leaned up against ammunition box. Uh, again, this mortar will be pulled out and replaced with something that actually looks more like a 50 uh, or a 60 millimeter mortar when uh, I find one, <laughs> because I don't have one at the moment, um, but I will locate one. This one here then is, a, as you can see, that's the two figures, the guy who was the bazooka number two, so we said a guy loading the bazooka, and this was the rather bizarre character with uh, the thumbs up, as you can see here. Um, so I was like, what am I going to do with this guy? Um, so basically I used the spare rounds from the uh, bazooka set, um, put one into his hand there, uh, one into this guy's hand. There's a roll of communications cable or wire of some sort, spare bazooka round there, and a radio set there. Uh, here we have an ammunition box. Here we have another ammunition box with a rifle uh, and one carbon lined, lined up against it. Just to give the impression that uh, they're incorporating or interacting with that uh, that mortar. The mortar itself is actually from the uh, Armorfast uh, German mortar teams set because an American uh, 81 millimeter mortar at that scale doesn't look vastly different to a German one. So I substituted uh, that in there. Um, 
in lieu of an American one because I just don't have an American one at the moment. But that is those guys, that is the uh, the, the mortar team, um, particularly the 81 and the, uh, the, the 60 obviously was the other one. Um, now that's uh, basically that. So these guys, as you can, as you're probably aware, um, are part of my set, uh, series uh, to do with the uh, Airfix US Marines, which are these guys here. If we can just get a shot on that, we, we think we know what that looks like anyway at this stage, which is these guys. We've also done uh, a video on the related uh, Esky guys, which are these guys here. Um, and that is uh, basically the conclusion of this uh, little series on that um, because there, the Fujimi set is the only other one um, that I can find out there that has uh, sculpts related to the Airfix uh, 172 US Marines and I won't be doing those guys because I just don't like them, I don't think they're up to, to scratch at all. So that's it guys, that is the uh, quick review uh, of the US Infantry Combat Team 172 by Hasegawa. A nice little set, a little bit uh, messy here and there as regards uh, the arms and bits and pieces of the multipose element of it. The plastic is hard, a little bit hard to work with, the injection plugs uh, are in a few awkward places with a sharp scalpel, will, will and did take care of that. Um, they paint up fine, they match in relatively well with uh, either the uh, Airfix or the Esky guys. Um, from that perspective, so I have no issue with that, and they'll all be uh, in the uh, the one battalion um, for rapid fire purposes uh, on my war games table. So I'm happy enough with those, in fairness. So yeah, I would recommend them. Uh, they're a nice little way to kind of uh, augment uh, the U.S. Marines set by Airfix uh, in uh, the same kind of poses and that. So nice to have. Uh, so that was it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, take care. We'll see you in the next video. All the best. Bye for now.